When I was in graduate school, I can remember two things that were said to me that I took to heart and uh, have hopefully more effectively employed as I've gone on. One teacher said to me, I think you just need to let go of your fear of being an asshole. <laughs> so I hope that I have uh, slowly but surely done a better and better job of relinquishing my fear of being an asshole. I think he was talking about in my work. <laughs> I was too polite. I um, see. And another teacher said to me, you know, it's not always a, a nail that you're hammering into a wall. Sometimes it's just a thumbtack. There's something about um, the sacred space that exists between action and cut, or between the curtain going up and going down that's um, difficult to describe and, and unlike anything else I, I've experienced. Yeah, to be, a, to be a voice for people who would maybe otherwise not be listened to. Didn't have a voice. Right. And I did the work session, which lasted 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. Didn't tell anyone that I'd played the MC in college and knew all the music. <laughs> like, why? A quick study. <laughs> yeah. And um, they told me I had the job at like seven. And I went and watched the show for the first time and thought, holy shit. That's not what I did in school. I am in big trouble. Uh, or I didn't, I was excited, but I knew that I was, I mean, it was, he was a living was icon. They told me I had the job at like seven. Jesus. And I went and watched the show for the first time and thought, holy shit. That's not what I did in school. I am in big trouble. Uh, or I didn't, I was excited, but I knew that I was, I mean. You watch Alan Cumming. It was, he was a living was icon. Just, plus you can't rehearse that show. You just get ready to rehearse in a way because your scene partner's the audience. Well, so you're in a room yeah. by yourself. And I was just, I would drink a bottle of Pepto-Bismol over the course of every show, because I was, otherwise I would just be literally shitting my pants. I was so <laughs> horrified. It was like being shot out of a cannon. And your job is to act as if this is your club, and these are all your friends, right. and you love them, and they love you, and I'm just... <laughs> you love you know. me, right? <laughs> but it was great. I think I realized that I had this sort of unconscious adversarial relationship with the audience that I'd never really been forced to examine, you know? Right. That there were this potentially critical body that maybe I shut out with the whole fourth wall. I projected onto them this sort of judgment or, mm. you know, and having to play that part, you know, knocking that wall down and really redefining that relationship, I think really cracked me open. Yeah. I'm really thankful that I had to do that. As you describe it, it seems like the perfect sort of introduction to the big leagues. Yeah. In terms of being an actor and, and connecting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of uh, businessman first. Mm. There, there are several of us. I, I consider myself like 60% business and 40% artist. So mm -hmm. I'm always kind of in awe of people who seem 80% artist. Well, you know, I've been lucky in that the things that, uh, that I've done that have been the most commercially viable or lucrative have also been the most artistically viable. I mean... That's rare. That's crazy. You know, I, the that Six Feet happen. Under and Dexter are both unique in, 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 in television and, and take a lot of chances. They've also been the jobs that put me on the map and paid me the most money. Yeah. So, sort of having my cake and eating it too. It, that, that is true. That's all ridiculous. Yeah. When you make an open-ended commitment to a character like this, at some point, it's not the same job that it was initially. And you want to try to honor the integrity of the character in your performance, but you're not going to do that the same way you initially did it, because mm. you've done that work. You have real memories from the set. Yeah. You know, you don't have to imagine things. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's tricky, but it's really about finding a way to not phone it in, but also get out of its way, you know? Because you know it on a cellular level. I mean, yeah. and also tolerate that you know it. Like, you'll find, I'll find myself doing habitual Dexter things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some part of me in the back of my head going, oh, yeah, you just push button number five. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, button number five. I'm the guy, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> I, so know it's, I know which button to it's push. A, yeah, it's a tricky thing, but it's not, it's, it's. Well, I mean, if you were, if you were to, to give any advice mm -hmm. to, I mean, when actors do a pilot, in theory, they're signing a contract these days for six seasons. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you can't wrap your brain around 
at that point what it's going to mean to actually do it that long. Right. What are some uh, uh, negatives or, or, or uh, areas of this could happen, mistakes, um, pitfalls, what have you, mm -hmm. could you maybe recommend to avoid? The sillier the better, I would think. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, Don't depend on craft service. Think about your hairstyle. Do you really want to shave every day? Stubble is good. That's why Dexter has stubble, because I'd done six feet under, and he was clean shaven, and I'd get the razor bumps and the ingrown hairs, and I got so sick of shaving. And they were like, no, he's really fastidious. He should say, yeah, but he, he's aware that that's the profile he's avoiding. So he would have a little stuff. So I had this whole argument to justify the fact that I didn't want to shave every day. Right. As far as doing something again and again and again, that's different than most in that your scene partner is the audience. So you have a different room full of people every night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there were definitely some lulls. Needless you know. to say. Yeah. I fell off the stage one night and landed in a woman's lap. Great improv moment for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I righted myself and I was okay and I looked up and I said, I fell off the stage. That was what I came up with. 